Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, I'm going to play around with some ink and watercolor. On a Facebook group, uh, I think it's Watercolors Beginners and Beyond, people have been playing around with a kind of a neurological type challenge where they're taking, I don't know if they're using ink or pens, they're drawing in shapes and just having fun with it and then painting in almost in a stained glass type fashion. So I wanted to play around and have fun. I'm going to take some Chinese ink. This is just the Yasutoma liquid Chinese ink. I'm going to grab my number one rigger brush. I might switch it up. We might play with some other ones, but I'm just going to go to town and have fun. Um, I had just did a painting of a sunflower and I've been in a flower painting type mood. So I'm just going to have fun and see what happens. It's also kind of inspired by this little uh, journal that I've been keeping. If you journal, you may be familiar with a brand called Peter Pauper Press. And some of their journals, they have uh, covers that mimic historical covers or paintings or tapestries. And one that I'm currently using has, I think, a, a Japanese-esque cover. I have to look it up to see. But it's really beautiful. And we have cats meowing in the other room. Story of this YouTube channel. So what I'm thinking as I just have fun and as it starts to come together is make these marks, which honestly for the sunflowers, they're just so similar to or so reminiscent for me of the chrysanthemum marks that you see in the Chinese brush painting. So I'm just going to put a few and then create some interesting lines and uh, geometry around it. My concern is this. Okay. So I think an important thing is to know your limitations or your tendencies. And I've mentioned this before about my own personal self, where I have to work an entire painting at once from top to bottom to left to right and get everything going, or I'll change my brush strokes. Um, and my speed in different spots. And when that happens, I don't have a nice uniformity. I start having issues. And I think you could see that right off the bat where I took this approach here, kind of switched it up and now it's even looser. But I think it's early enough to save myself from myself. These marks are going to be our leaves. I'm pushing, getting dry brush marks and having fun. I also want these long curving marks now. Reminiscent of the cover of the journal that I was telling you all about. There's these interesting circular shapes that I don't know what they're supposed to represent. Probably just little flower buds. And we'll use them here. And looking at that cover, it's interesting because it breaks. I don't, I'm not looking at it in front of me right now, but whenever I do look at it, it does um, 
break some rules that I essentially try to follow. Uh, not creating hashtag marks, i.e. right here I have these two lines and if I bring up another one, I start creating a hashtag right there. Create the idea of a ground. I'll go on top of these with even more drawn flowers. It's always weird trying to draw a circle with a, a brush. It's a mark that shows up in Chinese brush painting for uh, blossoms and yeah, for the blossoms it shows up there, that circular shape. I've always had difficulty with it. Kind of like trying to sign your name with a brush. I don't know how people are able to do that. I may have just not put enough effort into that. Let's um, should I stop this part here? do seem to be all over the place. I'm going to wash this brush off. I'm not going to clean the ink off of here. I might come back with some ink on top, so put this somewhere where it won't spill. I'm going to pause the camera to hit it with the blow dryer, and then we'll start playing with watercolor on top. All right, I'm going to pull out a brush that is really common, but I just never use it. Yeah, Hanks, I never use it. This is I think just a round number six, silver, silver black velvet. Get it going. Grab some lemon yellow. We'll see how it sits on top. Now with my tendency for fast and loose approach, I'm probably not going to fill in the lines that well. And you could take those two approaches to it. I would assume that the um, very slow, methodical fill in the lines perfectly would have a meditative, meditative type effect where you're um, almost like uh, painting the, what the mandalas, but I'm thinking knowing myself that I, I wouldn't be able to maintain that throughout, but that might be an experiment for you all to try. Let me mix some light red oxide into this. Oh, this is great for pulling paint off of the palette. Wow. This is my orange. I always try to use the number one rigger or the number four rigger, which are longer than the hairs on this brush, or at least not as dense. And I always start having issues trying to pull pigment up. Uh, speaking of which, another thing I wanted to mention, I never have issues with this paint, uh, this ink, in regards to wet and wet, or it pulling up. This is some Payne's Gray. That being said, I hit it with the blow dryer, but 
didn't go for that long, so we might have a little bit of bleeding issues. Here's some cerulean with my lemon yellow. To start creating greens. I really should use this brush more often or pick up a, a new one of it because it seems damaged when I hold it up. Or it might be just the way it's cut. What's up? Um, mixing Payne's Gray into this for a darker leaf color. might go between these lines now that I created and start coloring them in. This is something that actually, if you're familiar with, well, if you've ever seen a computer before, <laughs> um, there used to be the MS Paint program, which was like very simple and you could draw little lines on it and the little curves. And there was the fill button and you could fill everything between certain lines. This is very reminiscent of that. This is Cerulean. And I wonder if this kind of stained glass approach that people were sharing on um, that Facebook page was inspired by that or stained glass. I think I recall of all people, Betsinski having done some of that work in one of his books. Betsinski was a painter of uh, dark fantasy remember there might have been something in this fashion some cleaner cerulean blue let's let this wash into a light vignette there. This is actually very, very fun. So I highly recommend trying this, whether it's flowers or a house or a landscape. In fact, I think that'd be a good, interesting change of pace doing a landscape in this fashion and just exploring the potential because it is definitely fun. Let me grab some clean lemon yellow. Let's see if we can get that going. I think um, black wash would be acceptable, as well as black ink. Let's grab some burnt umber. One thing I never really liked, that's not to be negative, I don't like the look of the um, watercolor over ink where it starts 
softening, softening areas. So I think if I was to pursue this into a, a lot of detail, I'd want to play back on top of those. Do we want more cerulean? Some greens coming up. Fade that up. Let me pause for a quick dry off. Wow, we're only like 15 minutes into this video. So I'm going to grab a little bit of ink just to accentuate some marks. I know I had said I wasn't a fan of the lighter aspects that start to take place whenever you paint watercolor over ink, but it might be able to use that to my advantage of having some spots that pop and some spots that recede using these marks as a pull forward, and let pre-existing recede back. At that point, I think it'd be a, a matter of quality of the ink and what it's capable of darkness-wise. And the great thing about this is anybody can do this. Let's make a mark and then we'll just see how it dries. So that's my dark mark. Let me pause. We're going to pay attention to that spot right there. All right, so that's the spot. It did dry a little bit and lighten up some, but overall, I'm happy with the contrast that starts taking place. I'm gonna stop the video here. It's a very fun approach. I recommend trying it. I recommend, if you wanted just to hang out with somebody and paint, that'd be a fun date if you wanted to introduce somebody to painting. So um, on that note, I hope you enjoyed, have fun. Um, if you know anything about this style and this approach, let me know and let me know what you like to do with it. And feel free to tag me in any of that stuff. Let's, um, let's just sign it and put a mat over it. Just to see. And then we'll sign off. Right there. I hope you enjoyed and have a great day.